All the hero talents. The hero talents are here, boys. Blizzard dropped four new hero talent trees and gave us a bunch of new details about what hero talents are all about. So let's dig into it and let's find out. What are the four hero talent trees that they dropped yesterday? We got the Sand Land for Death Knight, which is an unholy or blood spec tree. We also got the Krona Warden, which is a preservation or augmentation evoker stream, uh, tree. We got the Mountain Thane, which is a fury or protection warrior tree. And then we got the Lightsmith, which is for holy or prot paladins. Now we're going to dig a little bit deeper into what those trees are, what they do, and what, uh, what they're all about. But before we do... Let's talk a little bit about hero talents and what Blizzard wants them to be like because they released a long article about how they want hero talents to affect our gameplay and how they're going to you know, change the game going forward. So let's see what Blizzard had to say. The War Within expansion introduces hero talents as a new update to the World of Warcraft classes. They are an evergreen feature, so these are going to continue on into multiple expansions and, uh, you know, and forward. To form your character progression for each class specialization that introduce new powers and class fantasies. Feedback is critical here, and I agree with this. I think this is going to be a big hit or miss in terms of balancing. And Whenever they change talent trees, and this is a change to talent trees, you know, don't, don't be fooled. They're adding talents to the talent trees, essentially. And this is going to affect gameplay rotation and everything. So this is going to take a lot of balancing on their end. And that might be why the, uh, the PTR already has 11.0 on there. You know, it's already being uploaded because this is going to be a, a big balancing act for them. What is up, King Julian? Yeah, like Sanctum of Domination, I sure hope not. Yeah, so what are hero talents? Hero talents are new self-contained talent trees that players will unlock at level 71. So we're going to get these at 71, and we're going to start to build them out to level 80. Hero talent builds on abilities and, care, uh, and talents that are current part of class spe uh, specializations. Players can choose... A single hero talent tree to activate on a character, and these talents can be changed in the same way that talents. So they'll be interchangeable. You can flip them around, do whatever you want, as long as you're not in the midst of a like mythic plus or something. Uh, there are three hero talent trees for each class, except druids have four and demon hunters have two. Each specialization has two hero talent trees that you can choose between. So based on whatever your spec is, you won't be able to pick between the three. You'll pick between two different ones that are linked to that one. So they give a little example here, basically, for Warrior. If you're Protection, you'll be able to pick between the new one that we've got today, Mountain Thane or Colossus. If you're Arms, you'll be able to take Colossus or Slayer. And then Fury, Slayer. Man, that reminds me of Halo. And then Fury is Mountain Thane. So a Fury Warrior cannot be a Colossus. That's what they're basically telling you. There'll always be one left out based on your spec. So there are 11 nodes in the Hero Talent Tree. The first of these unlocks at level 71, and you earn one talent. All the way, uh, one talent per level, all the way up to level 80. So every talent you get uh, will be able to be put into the tree. Talents will have starter builds available. So like your talent trees love starter builds, and you'll be able to save different builds. Uh, so you can, you know, just flip flop between them, whatever you want, uh, before you start your mythic run or something. Um, don't think of them as talents. They're more like tier sets. That's a good way to put it, kind of uh, hot. That is, yeah, they're kind of like tier set bonuses, except you're selecting what that bonus is going to be. That's a, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, enjoy my stream. Yeah, King Julia was great. Uh, what to expect from Hero Talents. So uh, each Hero Talent tree starts with a keystone. This is a talent that will introduce you to your core mechanic and concept of the tree. This could be a new ability, an enhancement on an existing ability or cooldown, or a buff that you can trigger. The bottom talent of the tree, or the capstone talent is that uh, will build on the core themes of the tree and adds new power to your keystones each talent tree will offer a modified Come, let us lay waste Claudia. To this thank you for the sub on youtube welcome to our scourge each tree will offer or modify some class utility and include defensive bonuses that are useful to all specializations we are aiming for all trees to be about equal in amount of utility and defensiveness they provide so they want these things to really be about survivability and utility, which is interesting. Now, they make a note here that tanking roles will have more additional, you know, defensive abilities that are less valuable to, say, a healer or a DPS. But um, on that other side, you know, healers and their specs, if you're playing Holy Priest, you'll have more talents available for, you know, to buff your healing rather than, say, your, uh, your, your defensives or something. Three or four nodes in each role, each tree will be choice nodes where you can choose between two options. 
hero talents are meant to add enough damage or healing throughput to be significant without being so important that these new talents overshadow your current class or spec talents. And that kind of goes back to the whole thing about these are kind of like set bonuses. I really like what you said there, Hot. Um, and that, you know, when you get that set bonus, it does become integral to your damage and healing throughput. It isn't a very important part of how you're going to play the game. But it's not going to really, you know, uh, drastically change your spec in general, right? You're still going to have kind of the same rotation. You're still going to kind of do the same things. But it's going to be a massive, you know, change in your throughput. Uh, most hero talent trees add new visual effects to your classes, both to communicate what they're doing and bring to their class fantasies to life. However, these are not a complete visual rework. Uh, your class and spec will still kind of, yeah, they'll still be the same at their core. That's what they're trying to say there. Uh, maintaining freedom of choosing. We want players to be free to choose their hero talents uh, that has the gameplay visuals and flavor that they prefer. Our goal is for both options to feel similarly effective in raid dungeons, mythic plus, and PvP. We're working to avoid ability bonuses and hero talents that could make certain trees feel required for certain activities. Interesting. So they don't want you to have to pick a certain hero talent tree because you're PvPing or because you're raiding one day. Now, in terms of, you know, how that's going to work out, that's a nice theory to have. Uh, but I'm not sure that's how things are going to work out because there's always going to be, you know, that biz, you know, spec for PvP or, or PvE. But, um... It's, it's, it's a valiant effort that they're going to put forward. We'll see if it ends up working out that way. Uh, we know for some players, prioritizing throughput is the most important thing to them. Even with different, uh, even with differences between choices seeming small. That's okay, but keep hero talent balance close. Keeping hero talent balance close is one of the priorities so that can play what, so people can play what they prefer with any content. Okay, that's interesting. We'll see. We'll see if, like I said, if that holds true. How we chose hero talent concepts. So I, I did read this ahead of time, and really what they wanted to do was be able to introduce, you know, a lot of class fantasies and things that are in the game, that have, people have always wanted in the game, but have never necessarily been something, you know, that's it's a full-blown talent tree. So again, these, these are, you know, you ever wanted to be um, a monk uh, that can do a Blade Master style monk, you know? Blade Master's always been one that people have requested for a long time. Sandland... For uh, for Death Knights, which Death Knights are getting, Sandland were often a class that people described as wanted. That whole vampiric fantasy, playing as a vampire, that's something people have wanted to live out. So they really wanted to be able to push these through to be able to um, give you iconic character archetypes that are strongly tied to specific races and factions, you know, such as Keeper of the Grove or Mountain Thane. Um, they're excited about this, as am I. I think these are a cool addition to the game. And again, these could be really... Uh, these could be, a, honestly, a make-or-break feature for this expansion. These are really going to either frustrate the shit out of us, or these are going to be something we look back on a band and be like, damn, the hero talents were great, man. That changed the game in a better way forever. Yeah, revitalization of, of uh, Roar? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. The, a lot of these are going to change, I think, uh, some old talents right now that we don't really consider to be that important. These could make them important. So with gameplay with hero talents... We have several goals for what it feels like to play World of Warcraft and with hero talents. Here are some of our guiding principles for what they affect your so for how they affect your capability, your rotation, and what you pay attention to in combat when you're you uh, when you're doing your whole user interface. Uh, we we like to say on the team that our goal for hero talent gameplay is to make you what you are, but more. I like that. So diving deeper into class fantasy, in essence. Uh, we know that many of you have long histories with your favorite classes, and you play them because you like their gameplay and spells and abilities that matter in, the rot in their rotation. Whether it's spinning plates of affliction, the cycles of arcane, or frenic, uh, frantic reactive of fury, hero talents don't override what matters to a class. You should feel like you're playing your spec, with a twist or a boost, and not as if things uh, you care about have become unimportant or been replicated or replaced. That's interesting. So again, they're just they just want to make these things more about enhancing your spec, enhancing your rotation, diving deeper into class fantasy. Uh, honestly, I like their goals that they're setting forward. What you are, but more is the quote here. 
it could be interesting going forward. Uh, and if they're able to fulfill this, I because I love playing Death Knight partially because of the lore and what the spec offers me and how it feels. So if, if in essence, hero specs are a deeper dive into that lore, a deeper dive into the feeling of my class, the rotation of my class, I, I'm excited to try it. I hope they, uh, they end up coming through on these promises. Um, some hero talents do require you to take certain talents in your class or spec trees to access their powers. This is often because talents fit the flavor and theme of that specific hero talent tree. For example, uh, the Mountain Thane, Thane Warrior tree enhances Avatar and Thunderclap. Temporal Paladin um, extra power to Wake of the Ashes. And Elune's Chosen Druids can cast particularly strong Fury of Elune. However, a hero talent tree will only ever require or enhance small number of classes or spec talents. It's important to us that there will be freedom to customize your class and build. So this is, um, so there's certain talents that we're going to have to, I wonder how that's going to affect your choices. Okay, let's, enough about the summary on hero talents. Let's look at the four trees they revealed real quick. We're just going to look at the keystone and the capstone, basically the first and the final in each of these trees and to get a flavor of what they're about. So uh, for Sandland, which I am very interested in as a blood DK, we first have Vampiric Strike, okay? Your Death Coil and Death Strike have a 10% chance to take more to make your next Heart Strike or Scourge Strike become a Vampiric Strike. Vampiric Strike heals you for 3% of your maximum health, holy crap, and grants you Essence of the Blood Queen, increasing your haste by 1.5% up to 7.5% for 20 seconds. So as if we weren't healing godly enough, you're gonna you're gonna have, be able to yeah. This is by the way, so you will be able to be a sand laying if you spec unholy or blood. So you can imagine that the way this spec would work is making unholy more survivable. It looks like, or making blood even more godly than it already is at healing. Very interesting. Uh, so let's check the um, that was the uh, keystone. Let's see the capstone here, or that was the capstone. Let's see the keystone, whatever that is. Um, Gift of the Sand Land. While Vampiric Blood or Dark Transformation is active, you gain Gift of the Sand Land. Gift of the Sand Land increases your effectiveness of your Essence of the Blood Queen by 100% and replaces your Heart Smite and Scourge... Uh, oh, your Heart Strike and, cur and Scourge Strike with Vampiric Strike for, dur for the duration. Wow. So that, that kind of builds off of the first talent there. Adds more to it, increasing by 100%. My god, I mean, the amount of healing throughput that this thing is going to push. Sand Lane are basically just su broken, blood-sucking vampires. This is going to take a lot of uh, Sand Lane. Sand Lane, Sand Lane. This is going to take a lot of uh, balancing. I'm not going to lie. Right now, I mean, this just makes DKs. If you play Blood DK and you go Sand Lane, that sounds like you're going to be an invincible god. Okay, as much as I, I would love to stick on that, let's see uh, what the next specialization. So this is for um, the Chrono Warden Evoker. So you have to be Augmentation or Preservation to play this. So let's see what this is. Chrono Flame. Living Flame is enhanced by Bronze Magic. Repeating, uh, reappearing 15%. Oh, re what is this? repeating 15% of the damage or healing you dealt to the target in the last five s seconds as arcane up to fix amount, up to a fixed amount. So this thing reapplies all the damage you applied in the last 15 seconds, or the last 15%? What the hell? That seems... Br what the Some of these, I mean, I guess it's going to buff... All the, everyone's going to get buffed as shit. But that seems like a lot, to reapply all the damage you did within the last five seconds again. So if you match this with your rotation perfectly, I mean, you're going to pump hard. Holy crap. Throwing shit at a wall is required to have some fun. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I like that they're kind of going balls deep on these, honestly. It seems like they're really trying to change up your, uh, your gameplay a little bit. Okay, so the last one here is After Image. Empowering Spells sends up to three Chrono Flames to your target. Chrono Flames have a small chance to grant you um, uh, Essence Burst. I don't know what these abilities are for evokers, so maybe there's evokers in the chat that know what I'm talking about. 
But uh, this whole thing sounds like you're building replicants of yourself, re kind of going back in time and redoing damage you already did. That's an interesting class fantasy. I, like I said, if there's evokers in the chat, they could probably say more or speak on that stuff. Okay, Lightsmith Paladin. You're going to have to be holy or prot to be able to play this. Let's see here. Okay, active. This one is called Holy Armaments. Will of the Light. Will the Light to coalesce and become manifest at a target location as a Holy Amendment, which will which may be wielded by you and your allies. Oh. Alternates between Holy and Bulk Work and Sacred Weapon. Last 20 seconds after being cast, max two charges. So what's Holy Bulk Work? It alternates between them. So Holy Bulk Word, while wielding a Holy Bulk Word, gain absorbing shield 15% of your maximum health and additional 5% every two seconds, stacking up to 30%. So this sounds like a defensive ability. That's an interesting one. And then uh, Sacred Weapon, while wielded by Sacred Weapon, your spells and abilities have a chance to deal additional Holy damage or healing. Okay, so that's interesting. So they've touched on all three specs here. Yeah, if you want this, I will link it here in the in the chat. That's the Wahad article. Okay, so Holy Bulk Word is a, basically a tanking version of this. And then Sacred Weapon is the DPS slash healing version. And your allies will be able to pick up this stuff. So I guess your DPS and healers in the group will pick up Sacred Weapon. And then Holy Bulk Word will be picked up by the tank. That's interesting. Okay, the final talent here is Blessing of the Forge. Avenging Wrath summons an additional Sacred Weapon. And during Avenging Wrath, the, your sacred weapon casts spells on your target and echoes the effects of your holy power abilities. What the hell, that sounds like rune weapon. You're summoning an additional weapon that'll cast abilities for you. That sounds just like, it sounds like uh, that paladins are getting rune weapon in essence. Because if you don't know Death Knights, I mean, we have rune weapon that basically mirrors our casts and doubles all the shit that we do. Yeah, double holy shock. Yeah, that sounds like it's a possibility. Definitely. Okay, that sounds interesting. So again, Lightsmith is for Holy and Prot. Okay, let's move on to uh, the final one here. We have Th Mountain Thane Warrior. This goes for Fury or Protection. Okay, so Lightning Strikes is their first one. Damaging enemies with Thunderclap, Revenge, Raging Blow, or Execute has a 10% chance to also strike one with a Lightning Bolt, dealing moderate nature damage. Lightning strikes occur 50% more often during Avatar. Oh wow! Okay, so you get a, you get another damage ability with your thunderclap with your thunderclap and other abilities there. Thunderclap, revenge, raging blow, or execute. So you can you have a chance to shoot out lightning when you do that. Okay, that's cool. Lightning strikes. Okay, let's see the final one here. Avatar of the storm. Casting Avatar grants you two charges of thunder blast and resets the cooldown of thunderclap. Holy crap. This is a For Mythic Plus, I can imagine the group control of this shit. Oh my god. The amount of damage you'll be able to put out. To double Thunderclap plus Lightning Blast coming off. While Avatar is not active, Lightning Strikes have a 10% chance to grant you Avatar for 4 seconds. Thunder Blast. Your next Thunderclap becomes a Thunder Blast, dealing Storm Strike damage. Damn. I've always thought Thunderclap was such a cool ability. It's such a throwback ability for Warriors. So this is really cool. This is going to make Thunderclap way more uh, interesting in your rotation. Yeah, this tree seems like trash for Fury. They want us to spec into Thunderclap, basically. Yeah, and intervene uh, when we already can't, unless we take zero utility without taking tree rework. I don't know. We'll see how this works out. Again, you know, I mean, this might not be... So this is Mountain Thane. So th maybe maybe as a prot warrior, you decide to go with Colossus. Again, this is not... This is not you don't have to pick this, right? This could be for a protection warrior who wants to PvP more. Now, they said they don't want to have the game balanced that way, where some of these are better for PvP, some of these are better for raiding or Mythic Plus, but I feel like it's inevitable that's what's going to happen. So maybe if you don't like this, um, uh, Uncle Jemima, you decide to go with a protection Colossus rather than a protection Mountain Thane. But this is for Prot and Fury, it's this tree right here. Now the question is, when Avatar of the Storm procs Avatar... Does it proc Avatar of the Storm? Can it chain? Oh, I don't know. We have to read deeper into these. Casting Away grants you two charges 
Uh, Lightning Strike has a 10% chance to grant you Avatar for 4 seconds. It looks like you can. Hey, there's a 10% chance at least that it can. Because up here, this one has... Uh, Lightning Strike has a 10% chance and also strikes one Lightning Bolt. So maybe you can. I don't know. It's all about the percentage chances of these things working out. But all in all, Hero Talents, I mean, this is a big one for Blizzard. It really is. We'll see if this ends up working out for them. Uh, I, I think this is why they're going to have a longer testing period, why they already got this on the PTR. This is going to take a lot of work, a lot of balancing. But uh, I'm, I'm excited and happy that they did this. I want them to take risks. I want them to try to make changes. This is good. I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't be okay with just the same old, same old. You know, this is, a, this, is, this is content. Yeah, exactly. This is content. This is what we need in the game. I feel like change it up a little bit, excite it a little bit. And uh, again, this is just four of the trees. We're going to get so many more of these going forward. But so far, I'm excited.